Right now we have Luke Shen from MXC joining us. So Luke, good to see you again. And uh, welcome and the stage is yours. Okay, thanks very much for the introduction, Phil. Um, so just um, by way of introduction, my name is Luke Shen. I'm from the MXC Foundation. Um, today I'll be presenting on <coughs> cross-chain uh, decentralized apps, uh, use cases for Polkadot and the pr pr prospective data highway parachain. <coughs> So just for context, um, by DAP, I mean uh, where the static front-end website or game is stored on chain. Um, so bridge from Polkadot to say uh, CSKynet uh, blockchain, for example, uh, where business logic um, is on chain or on a smart contract um, and where website data like images are stored on chain too, uh, using, for example, the IPFS protocol. So the benefit of uh, the distributed P2P uh, network is incentivized to always keep the uh, website or game online. And by cross-chain, I mean in token payments uh, or votes through through governments to make decisions from multiple um, parachains or from bridged layer one blockchains. Um, so just to introduce the MXC Foundation, uh, it's a non-profit um, based in Germany, uh, founded in 2016. Uh, its mission is decentralizing IoT data exchange using LoRaWAN technology uh, for smart cities and so forth. Um, MXC's ERC20 token um, was built on Ethereum. Um, it's partners um, it partners with secure IoT hardware brands like MatchX. And um, by IoT, I mean Internet of Things. So Industry 4, um, so sharing data from hardware devices like temperature or air quality sensors. Um, and the data highway is the, um, the product that we're, we're building on, on Polkadot. Um, we created a white paper and roadmap in 2019 to integrate with Polkadot. Um, currently, the standalone blockchain on mainnet um, is using it's built, built using um, Substrate Framework uh, version three, and Data Highway's mission um, is to be a parachain on uh, that's governed by the DAO community. Um, it experiments on on Rococo, um, and the initial community incentives are participation in, in operating it through what's termed as the DHX um, mining. So DHX mining is basically locking and signaling uh, various bridge tokens like MXC. Um, and it was adopted from Ed Edgeware's pioneering lock drop approach. Um, so, and, and also keeping uptime of um, secure IOC hardware. Um, in addition, uh, there's uh, roaming. So we're collaborating with the LoRa Alliance um, and other Laura Wan ecosystem partners to convert um, ChirpStack's open source source Laura Wan IoT roaming protocols to make that decentralized on the data highway. So next we're going to be talking about the interchain data market. Um, so just we're going to be going through a user flow where buyers and sellers exchange ownership of IoT hardware and data uh, using cross-chain payments with a data market. So on the right, you can see there's um, a seller of IoT hardware and data, um, and it's, they're, they're going to be selling it for a buy now price in MXC tokens, like ERC20 tokens that are bridged from Ethereum. Uh, in the center, you can see there's a, we're going to be listing that um, IoT hardware and data on Data Highway's cross-chain data, data market um, DAP, uh, but we're calling it the interchain data market. And on the left, there's going to be a buyer. Um, so that trader is going to be purchasing that IoT hardware and data with, with their DHX um, tokens native to the data highway. So just for context, uh, what is IoT hardware? So there's different, different levels. So um, you yourself, you might, you might own an IoT end device, like a temperature or air quality sensor. Um, you've, you've even got some, you've got some of that kind of stuff even on your phone perhaps. Um, and uh, in, the, in this case, we're going to be using LoRaWAN technology, which is uh, uses low power to transmit data uh, up to 20 kilometers away in real time. And it generally sends that to an IoT gateway, which is another device. Um, so uh, um, MXC, like I was saying, it, it partners with um, organizations like MatchX um, and their flagship uh, MatchX product, like the M2 Pro gateway, um, that's all LoRaWAN compatible. Um, and generally, these gateways um, they they send that transmit data to us to um, a supernode, and that's generally a network server, um, <clears throat> and it does smart machine to machine bidding. Um, and for more details, you can refer to MXC's white papers. Uh, so you could be roaming with your IoT end device, um, transmitting the temperature to the nearest gateway located less than twenty kilometers away, 
and multiple gateways will relay that to a supernode network server, um, which shares that data with a cross-chain app, uh, like a website, mobile app, or, or a game. So um, yeah, so um, you've got this IT hardware identity that's, that's now associated with uh, a new owner. So, um, so here we're showing, <clears throat> So here we're showing that the new owner maintains the uptime um, of this IoT hardware for extra DHX um, token mining rewards. So on the left, you can see there's a buyer, uh, the, the new owner of this IoT hardware. Um, they wish to recuperate the cost of, of, of them purchasing this IoT hardware in the beginning. Um, and they're gonna, fund, they're gonna do that to, to fund its IoT data storage costs. So they're going to register this IoT hardware as collateral um, to boost their DHX mining rewards in the Data Dash app. So this Data Dash app's uh, um, available for mobile devices at the moment. It's built on on Polka Wallet. <clears throat> um, it's, um, so also the new new owner um, they're going to be sharing their IoT data in exchange for, for DHX tokens. So that same that same buyer they also wish to recuperate the the cost further um, sharing this IoT data. IT, IT hardware's real-time air quality data um, measured at its location. Um, so they switch roles and this buyer becomes a seller of that data with a percentage markup on the same data market where they originally bought it from. Um, so there's gonna be different options for these data purchases to, to purchase that data, um, either subscription, um, su subscribing to its real-time air quality data for a, a monthly fee, um, for perhaps plus free community NFT dashboard to, to visualize and monitor that data, um, or, or even just a buy it now, buy it now option, buy now option for historic IoT um, data bundles, perhaps. So extending this example, um, on the right you can see there's two additional traders that wish to buy now or, or even subscribe to this um, IoT data for their cross-chain dApps. Um, in the top right, you can see there's a trader. Um, they're a cross-chain DAP developer. So generally they might develop some websites. Um, this time they're gonna be using um, uh, this bridge layer layer one network from say the IOTA network. Um, IOTA um, offer, offers, so, so they're basically gonna be offering up some of these IOTA tokens to subscribe to real-time IOT, IOT data, uh, data frames uh, that are listed on the data market, uh, which you can see the, the data market shown in the center. And in the bottom right, uh, there's another trader and, and they've, they've got a different goal. They're an authorized retailer of IoT goods on the data, high, on data highways um, data market. And they, they might wish to make a one-off purchase, um, instead of just a buy it now, purchase to access historic um, IoT data um, of, of certain devices for marketing purposes in their shop front. So, um, and the shop front might be cross-chain app, and they might exchange, exchange some of their dot token staking rewards that they might have earned um, to, to achieve that. So, so next, next we're going to be going through a different user flow. Um, this is a second example. Um, this one's going to be um, a DAO, so a decentralized autonomous organization, where the community members uh, vote with cross-chain tokens in, in DAO governance proposals for investment decisions. Um, and then a, this uh, either a proxy buyer um, on, on behalf of this DAO or a multi-sig. Um, they're going to purchase um, this IoT hardware and data from sellers on the interchain data market. So in this um, example, a DAO community member's vision might be to um, improve the accuracy of environmental air quality data feeds and share some, some for free on, on um, Kasama's state mine um, common, common goods parachain uh, for cross-chain DAP to use. So the idea, um, the idea um, is based on an existing app called um, Shoot, Shoot by Smoke, um, which was actually built by a Polkadot developer. Um, so I wonder if anyone can guess who that is. Um, and yeah, so the idea is that um, there'd be shared, shared developer boilerplate code uh, that fetches and calculates average air quality from various locations. And the benefits would include perhaps higher accuracy, there might be a higher quantity, broader geographic distribution of these, these data sources um, to augment existing air quality stations and higher trust um, level in the data um, due to higher ownership distribution. 
So in the example shown, uh, this Dow IT community has on the left, um, it's got treasury funds on, on multiple parachains, for example, the, the data highway parachain and, and also Cassandra State Mine Common Good parachain. And on the right, um, the Dow community member, um, in this example from an Ethereum bridge chain has, has this idea and they decide to um, pay a cross-chain transaction fee um, in, in MXC ERC20 tokens, um, Ethereum tokens, to submit a cross-chain DAO governance proposal uh, using MXC's data dash app. And um, the, proposal's, the proposal's gonna be requesting um, treasury front funding from Kasama State Mine Parachain uh, to create a cross-chain DAP um, and fund its cross-chain storage. And, um, and this um, DAP subscribes to purchasing uh, real-time access to IoT data air quality um, that's listed on, on Data Highway's data market. So other DAO members, they can vote to split um, the, the funding sources perhaps um, across multiple treasuries. So there's treasuries, perhaps 50% comes from State Mines Parachain and 50% comes from Data Highway's DAO treasury, which is basically 30% of the total supply that's reserved for those kind of purposes. So now, um, so after this happens, it, it, the, the DAO members granted proxy permission from the DAO governance and, and, and they can spend that cross those cross-chain treasury funds on, on the DAO's behalf purchasing IoT data from the data market. And, and the, identity, um, <clears throat> the identity of the IoT hardware is, is now associated with the, the DAO owner who may share or sell it. So finally, we're just going to go through developer experience. Uh, developer experience um, activities include selecting, configuring distributed uh, storage for IoT data, um, creating and access, accessing APIs of IoT services, data storage chains, and perhaps NFTs for visualizing that IoT data. Um, continuing from the previous example, um, developers would be directed by DAO, DAO governance decisions and share the open source code. Um, and, and that, that could um, be, do things such as, um, it could be custom APIs that access storage, uh, storage services and chains, like Filecoin, for example, um, cross-chain data fetching that may be automated. Uh, so users might provide, provide lists of IT data locations, and then, and then the code might automatically connect, uh, use the API to filter, bid, purchase access, and fetch that IT data from Data Highway's data market, and then calculate the average location air quality based on combining those real-time um, data, that real-time data that's been shared by numerous sensors, or even cross-chain storage redundancy of IoT data frames. So finally, just wanted to um, wrap that up. Um, thanks very much for the web, uh, to the Web3 Foundation and the community for the opportunity to present. Thanks a lot, Luke. Uh, it was a really nice presentation. It was so many different uh, blockchains you're talking about there. It's almost, beyond internet of things, but the internet of blockchains. Um, we do have a question around that, is that um, will DHX be connecting to other IoT chains such as like Helium or uh, Nodal? Do you know? Yeah, well, um, well, yeah, I was actually just watching the, the Nodal presentation earlier. Um, so that's that's definitely, that could definitely be a possibility. I was actually reading through Nodal, they were, they had, they were proposing um, uh, it's, it's, I guess, an alternative approach to, to Laura Wan. It, it looked like they had, um, it, it was um, potentially had had a different level of accuracy as well. So, so I guess what you what you might be seeing is is there might be data that Nodal might um, they might capture some data. They might store that on via via a bridge a bridged or a or, or a, a polka dot parachain. And 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 then then users might have a choice between they'll have more choice um, as to what what um, data they want to use um, in their cross chain apps. Really cool to hear. Thanks, Luke, so much for your presentation. Uh, talk to you soon. Thanks very much, Phil. Great to see you again.